Welcome to the official Global RPH YouTube channel. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Whether you're looking for medical insights, the latest healthcare trends, or fun educational content, there's something here for you. Are supplements worth it? Most people take supplements to improve health, 45%, or maintain health, 33%, often viewing them as insurance against dietary gaps. Other motivations include bone health, 25%, especially among women, increased energy, 11%, mental health, 4%, weight management, 3%, or menopausal support, 2%. Athletes tend to focus on physical performance and recovery, while pregnant women often use prenatal vitamins for reassurance rather than confirmed deficiencies. Only 23% of supplement use follows medical advice, and among diabetics, less than half use supplements under clinician guidance. Supplements are regulated as food, not drugs, meaning companies can avoid rigorous clinical testing. Labels must carry the disclaimer that claims have not been evaluated by the FDA, yet this warning rarely influences consumer behavior. The low cost of production allows companies to spend heavily on marketing, particularly through digital channels that target consumer health concerns. As a result, public belief in supplements often exceeds what science supports. Between 2017 to 2018, 57.6% of U.S. adults reported supplement use, with women, 63.8%, outpacing men, 50.8%. Older adults are the highest users. Nearly 25% of those over 60 take four or more supplements daily. Multivitamins, vitamin D, and omega-3 fatty acids remain top sellers. Supplement users tend to be healthier overall, exercising more, avoiding smoking, and having higher education and income. University students also have high usage rates, 1766% globally, with those consuming supplements often having healthier diets. Multivitamins are the most common products taken by half of U.S. adults and 70% of seniors. They aim to fill potential dietary gaps, though the nutrient doses may be too low to treat actual deficiencies. Single nutrient supplements like vitamin D or iron are preferred for targeted deficiencies. Because nutrients can compete for absorption, splitting doses throughout the day often improves bioavailability. Food fortification, introduced in the early 20th century, eliminated diseases like rickets and pellagra. Fortified foods, like vitamin D-enriched milk, remain an effective population-wide intervention. However, fortified processed foods often contain high sugar or sodium, reducing overall nutritional value. Supplements, on the other hand, deliver precise doses but lack the natural food matrix that may improve nutrient absorption. Tailored supplements target specific health needs. Examples include high-protein, low-sugar formulas for diabetics, kidney-safe blends for renal disease, or bone support products for older adults. Some evidence supports such specialized products. For instance, certain oral nutrition supplements accelerate healing in malnourished, hospitalized patients. However, effectiveness varies greatly between formulations. Much of the early enthusiasm for supplements came from observational studies showing correlations between high vitamin levels and good health. However, randomized controlled trials, RCTs, the gold standard, often fail to replicate these benefits, partly due to healthy user bias. People who take supplements also tend to eat better and exercise more, confounding results. RCTs show limited benefit of multivitamins for cardiovascular disease or cancer prevention. For example, the Women's Health Initiative found that calcium plus vitamin D improved bone density but did not reduce colorectal cancer. Trial designs often include participants without deficiencies, diluting possible benefits. Some supplements have proven value. Folic acid prevents neural tube defects when taken before and during early pregnancy. Vitamin D. 700-800 IU daily, plus calcium reduces fracture risk in those with low baseline levels. In smokers, vitamin E supplementation reduced prostate cancer incidence and mortality in the alpha-tocopherol beta-carotene trial. The COCO Supplement and Multivitamin Outcomes Study, COSMOS, demonstrated that daily multivitamins improve global cognition, slowing cognitive decline by approximately two years. 
The benefits were strongest in those with cardiovascular disease, suggesting targeted value in older adults. The vital trial revealed that vitamin D3, 2000 IU daily, helps preserve telomere length, a marker of biological aging, equivalent to slowing aging by almost three years. Omega-3 fatty acids did not show this effect. These findings highlight vitamin D as a potential anti-aging intervention. Antioxidant vitamins, ACE, fail to reduce cardiovascular events, and beta-carotene increases cardiovascular mortality in some groups. Omega-3 prescription doses, 4 grams daily, remain one of the few supplements with clear triglyceride-lowering effects. Vitamin E increased prostate cancer risk in the SELECT trial, while beta-carotene raised lung cancer risk among smokers. Calcium supplementation reduces recurrence of colorectal adenomas by 19%, but no vitamin prevents cancer across the general population. Correcting B12 deficiency improves cognition, but supplementation without deficiency shows no benefit. Vitamin E slightly slows decline in Alzheimer's patients, delaying institutional care by over 200 days. Calcium plus vitamin D reduces hip fractures in institutionalized elderly, but provides modest benefits in community dwellers. Vitamin K2 has shown strong reductions in vertebral and hip fractures in postmenopausal women. Vitamin D, 4,000 IU daily, may reduce the risk of progression from prediabetes to diabetes by 15% in deficient individuals. Chromium and herbal products like cinnamon show inconsistent or negligible effects. Fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, K, can accumulate and cause toxicity, leading to organ damage or even death. Vitamin D toxicity manifests as hypercalcemia, kidney stones, and confusion when daily intake exceeds 10,000 IU. Iron overdoses can be fatal, especially in children. Since 2007, the FDA has identified over 1,050 adulterated supplements, many spiked with pharmaceuticals. Weight loss and sexual enhancement products are particularly problematic. Around 23,000 ER visits each year are linked to supplement-related adverse effects. St. John's wort reduces effectiveness of HIV medications and statins. Vitamin E with anticoagulants increases bleeding risk. Grapefruit juice interferes with statin metabolism, a concern compounded by supplement use. For most healthy adults, supplements offer minimal added benefit. Whole foods provide complex nutrient matrices that pills cannot replicate. Experts recommend food-first strategies, with supplements reserved for proven deficiencies. Pregnant women, folic acid, 400 micrograms per day or 4,000 micrograms per day if prior neural tube defects, prevent severe birth defects. Older adults, age-related B12. Malabsorption affects 5 to 15% of adults, with supplementation often necessary. Vegans, B12 is critical, along with potential needs for vitamin D, omega-3, zinc, calcium, and iodine. Patients with malabsorption conditions like Crohn's disease, celiac disease, or cystic fibrosis often require tailored supplementation. Despite a booming $55 billion industry, most vitamin supplements provide little benefit for healthy adults. Evidence does not support routine use for cardiovascular disease, cancer, or mortality reduction. However, targeted supplementation, like folic acid for pregnancy, B12 for seniors, and multivitamins for cognitive aging, has clear merit. The COSMOS trial highlighted a rare success. Daily multivitamin use slows cognitive decline by two years in older adults. The VITAL trial suggests vitamin D may slow biological aging via telomere preservation. These results hint at potential niche benefits, but they are exceptions, not the rule. Supplements are not harmless. Risks include overdosing on fat-soluble vitamins, contamination with undeclared drugs, and dangerous drug interactions. As such, supplement decisions should be evidence-based and, ideally, guided by healthcare professionals. Key Takeaways most adults with balanced diets do not need supplements. Pregnant women, vegans, and older adults are exceptions. Cognitive benefits of multivitamins and potential anti-aging effects of vitamin D are the most promising new findings. Food remains the best source of nutrition, with supplements serving only as targeted backups. Thanks for watching our Global RPH production. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. Your support means the world to us. It helps us grow and keep delivering exciting, high-value content. Stay tuned, because the best is yet to come.